we're again we're finishing up uh, this particular book and we're going to be looking at the last four or the last three sections of chapter eight called the virtuous cycle uh, last week if you remember we we kind of introduced the subject and then we looked at two of the five aspects of what he describes as the virtuous cycle last week we talked about properly using scripture and also the idea of being transformed by stories how stories whether bible or in other ways can can help uh, us to develop the kind of virtuous lives that we need tonight we're going to build on the last three of those and the first one that's found in section four of that chapter the top of your outline is learning lessons from others example from others example others example now what I've done tonight is I've printed a few scriptures that illustrate this from the standpoint of the scriptures themselves where we find uh, people writing in the scriptures uh, using this principle the idea of examples other people as examples so look at a few of these with me uh, first of all Paul is in Philippians 2 19 to 24 says I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon <clears throat> that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare for everyone looks out for their own interests not those of Jesus Christ but you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father he has served with me in the work of the gospel I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me and I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon so what Paul is saying here is that his protege Timothy his son in the faith he's going to send to these believers at Philippi with the with the idea that they would be examples of Paul as well as examples of Christ and that there is benefit from learning from the example of him okay maybe the question we should ask ourselves is have you benefited spiritually from the example of somebody else have you okay if you have then that's kind of what we're talking about here's a here's an interesting question have you benefited spiritually from the negative from from negative things negative examples that you've seen in others probably so yeah I mean that happens and so the point is if you if you look around in the world and you see people you you will notice certain aspects of the spiritual truth that's in God's Word being demonstrated sometimes it's positively demonstrated sometimes it's negatively demonstrated and hopefully you are wise enough to know which is which right so that you will you'll see okay well that that kind of makes sense let's look at another one James chapter 5 the last part of verse 16 through 18 says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective Elijah was a human being even as we are he prayed earnestly that we would that it would not rain and it did not rain uh, on the land for three and a half years again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops so James again is referencing Elijah as an example of a person of prayer so again you see you can see this okay uh, Hebrews chapter 12 we're gonna look at that one in a minute uh, do you know what what Hebrews chapter 11 is about anybody Hebrews 11 yes yeah it's the 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 Hall of Fame of faith chapter it starts out by defining faith now faith is confidence in what we hope for the assurance about what we do not see 
And then jumping down to in verse 4, till the end of the chapter, we find person after person, which it starts out by saying, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen. By faith, Abraham, you see what I'm saying? All the way down to the end of the chapter. Which is significant because this, this hopefully will help you see that the use of example in, in emphasizing spiritual points and developing character within ourselves is a very important part of this. But if you go into chapter 12, which is what you have printed in your notes then, which follows, obviously, after chapter 11, right? So uh, the author of Hebrews goes on to say, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, well, who's that? That's the people we just were talking about, like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and, you know, all these other people. Let us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So the example of all the people that are mentioned in chapter 11, you know, this great cloud of witnesses, this is, you know, we're to, we're to benefit from that. Because of these people, that should motivate us. And then specifically because of Jesus. Again, consider the example of Jesus as the basis of helping you to walk well. So uh, these are all examples of, of looking at or basically how Bible writers have, uh, have used others that, that are a reference point to their audience to enable them to make a point. So let me ask you a question. Have you run across any, uh, any significant examples? You know, it doesn't have to just be examples from the Bible. It can be examples down through history. A lot of history is passed from the time when Scripture was written until today. There are lots of people who have been wonderful examples of living Christian lives uh, in the meantime, right? Like, are there some that stand out in your mind? I guess that's my question. Billy Graham? Billy Graham could be an example, right? Yeah. What would, you know, let's, let's talk about him for a second. What is it about Billy Graham that is it is admirable and and something that would be a positive example. I know, like late in his life, he said, "I feel like he, whatever it's, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but he was talking about the fact that he felt like he hadn't preached the cross enough, hmm. preached salvation enough." And hmm. I thought, you know, that's what you speak your whole life, but he yeah. felt like he hadn't preached salvation enough. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, what, do you, what is it that, I mean, if, if you see him, not every, I suppose not everybody sees that, but if you see him as, you know, an example in, in positive ways, what is it? There's no right or wrong answer. What is it about him that, that makes him a good example? Faithfulness. What's that? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. And that kind of goes along with what Cherry was saying, too. Faithful. Not only was he faithful for a long time, but he was very faithful, as you pointed out, to a message. His, he understood, and that, that's kind of what Hope's pointing out, too, that he understood his role was that of an evangelist. And so as he went about, you know, going, you know, doing crusades and all of these people around all over the world, the message was, was pretty much the same. It was a message of uh, that, that people need the gospel. People need the gospel. People need the gospel. This is what God has done, okay? 
Now, we might argue with him some theologically, okay, but that's all right. Okay, listen, we'll, we'll argue with one another a little bit theologically, won't we? We're never going to all agree on every theological point. That doesn't mean we can't admire certain people of the faith, even though they understand faith perhaps a little bit differently than we do. Others, that's a good one. And others. Dr. Charles Stanley. Dr. Charles Stanley. Yeah, why? Why so? Okay. You know, make me see things clearer. And okay. He's very passionate about it. Too. And he'd been doing it for a little bit. Yeah. See, I think that's a that's part of it, isn't it? To me, that's one of the things that that is impressive to me is the longevity that you see. Uh, that because, as you know, faithfulness is about. I mean, it's. It's about being true to a message, but it's also being true for the long haul to me. That's how I understand people. Others. James Dobson. Who's that? James Dobson? Okay, great. Oh, who? Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. He's a great one, isn't he? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mr. Positivity. What a guy. And that's what that's what we know him for, isn't it? Positivity. Yeah, that's awesome. Somebody, someone said something. John, John and Abigail Adams. Okay. Oh. Our president. Our found, our some of our founding John. folks. Okay. And I recommend, highly recommend that book by uh, David McCullough, and it's it's not fiction. It's non-fiction. Okay. 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 Good. Yeah. It doesn't you know? It doesn't just have to be you know, necessarily uh, the, always theological people. It can be, it can be others. What, who else stands out in your mind? Peel. Who's that? Peel. Yeah, Norman Vincent Peel. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Phil. No, maybe. Well, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who's the help me out here? I'm having a senior moment. Who's the guy who was at the Crystal Cathedral for forever? Schuler. Schuler. Robert Schuler. Okay. Yeah, I got to meet him. Yes, and uh, yes, got to got to go to that church building and and met him, and uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. But but again, longevity. Yes, sir. Tim Tebow, okay, that's good, okay. No matter what, no matter what was done to him, no matter what is done to him, he still sticks to his message. Yes, sir. Okay, can I challenge you? Here's the challenge for all of us. Live your life in such a way that you learn from the good examples and the bad examples that you encounter and, and that you become an example of note to others. Be an example because the truth is there are people watching you and there are people following you and not just on social media following, I mean really following you, okay? I think we all, most everybody in here remember Brother Bill very well. And yes. He's definitely a good example no matter what happened. Exactly. He was always constant. Exactly. Yeah. So see examples not just as people who are these, you know, very maybe famous people or, or whatever, right? You can be an example in, in very positive ways. And, and, that's part of, of what this is about is, you know, all of, these, all of these scriptures that we've pointed out so far are highlighting the, the importance of example, not just to say, hey, look at them, they're an example, but their example is, 
is right in front of you to show you how to do what it is that you need to do in order to walk well. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to talk about spiritual things in the realm of the, the theoretical. But here we have people who have, who have, you know, shown us by their own lives what it is, how to do it, learn from their example. And so, and then in turn, you be examples when you have opportunities to do that. Okay, uh, let's, let's go on then. Section five is the next of the five uh, elements of the virtuous circle. And it is seeing community, write that down, seeing community as the basis for helping us grow and maintain perspective. Seeing community as the basis for helping us grow and maintain perspective. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25, helps us to see a bit of this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, as, as our author got into this section, he mentions three particular ideas that he has in mind when he uses the word community and is thinking about this. Let's talk about what those are. Basically what he's talking about are various uh, aspects or various demonstrations of the body of Christ. Now the first would be the reality that there is one universal body of Christ. That is the community. Okay? So the worldwide universal body of Christ, everyone who is in Christ, this makes up the community. Okay? And um, he, as he was writing about this, he, he was talking especially in, with reference to what it says in Hebrews 12, that, you know, basically this, this isn't just made up of people <clears throat> who are alive today, but essentially from the time of the resurrection of Jesus up until this day. Those people who were in Christ before they died are a part of that universal church as well. Now, many of them we haven't met yet or, or won't meet until we go into the, the time of eternity. But nevertheless, they are a part of that. So that's the, that's the first one. And, and, and part, of, of all, part of what he's driving at here is it's not just to say, okay, there's three aspects of how the body of Christ plays out, but really to see ourselves finding our place, our way, our understanding, our perspective in that broader, broader community. What a lot of Christians do is that they focus on maybe one particular aspect of the definitions of community that we're going to talk about tonight. And the problem with that is that it limits your perspective dramatically. Okay? Uh, Let's go on to the second one. The, the second understanding of community, probably for us, would be what we understand as the Etiwamba Christian Church. That's our understanding of community. We have a community here, don't we? The Etiwamba Christian Church. Okay. And that's, that's good. So, so we need to find our place in that big community, number one, the worldwide community, we also need to find and understand our place in the 
in this particular expression of it known as a local congregation and then the third one and then we'll come back and focus on this then even in a smaller sense than that there are uh, what we might call smaller groups like classes or maybe workplaces or support groups or things like that where there's a, a number of people who are together accomplishing doing something you know studying together working together that are are a subset of something bigger that's what we're talking about okay now uh, the limitations see each one of these three has limitations this is why you need we need to see ourselves finding uh, a way to understand all three okay let's talk about some of the limitations what what is it that you would miss out on from a community of the body of Christ standpoint if the only understanding that you had of the body of Christ was maybe a uh, a small group that met in your home if that was the sum total of your understanding of what the body or the community was what would be what would be the detriment what would be wrong with that what would be missing incomplete yeah in, in how so how, how would how would that be limiting Yeah. Now, you, let's. I didn't even mention this because it's not really. By definition, it is the opposite of community. And yet, one of the most common aspects of many, many peoples, and it's becoming more and more popular today within our culture, is the idea of not needing community at all. I don't need community. I can worship. Look, I can worship God on my own. I can worship God anywhere I want to. That's wonderful. You can. That's not the point. That's not what we're talking about. Worship is but one aspect of community. Community, you know what community is? And see, community can be such a beautiful thing, but community can be a real pain. You know? Because the thing about community is that there are, there are a lot of benefits that come from being in a community, depending on what that community is. Listen, when Miss Camille and I moved here a year ago, we immediately were the beneficiaries of some, of some blessings because of now we're a part of the Etiwamba Christian Church as opposed to the Walnut View Christian Church, which is where we came from. Do you know what some of what some of our new blessings were? Let me tell you. All right. What do we have here that we don't have there? Well, they got snow today, so there's there's number one. But but I'm not even talking about that. No. Uh, one of the things that we have here that they don't have there are babies. They don't have babies. How important are babies to a church? Yeah. They don't have teenagers. Could you imagine this church without teenagers? Just, just think about it for a minute. Okay? Uh, they're not doing stuff like this. They don't have sweet tea either. They don't have sweet tea. Well, they do, but anyway. But now, I want to tell you something. The reason I, the reason I picked on the babies and the teenagers is because sometimes in a community, sometimes in the community, where there are babies, and you know what babies do, right? They act like babies. And that's not always fun, is it? No. Uh, and I don't know if you've heard this or not, but teenagers can also act like babies. Or, <laughs> you know, they can, they can be a handful, right? Okay? And listen, when it, when it comes to living in community, it, it's about learning to, uh, to adjust to that. And part of that adjustment when living in community 
necessarily, hear this now, necessarily means that I have to give up some of my rights in order to live in community. If I do not want to give up any of my rights, I, I, don't, I don't have to live in community, right? But if, you know, it, it's kind of like the discussion of do I want to live in the city or do I want to live in the country, right? A lot of people don't want to live in the city because they don't want to deal with a lot of, of the restrictions that go along with living in larger places. You know why those restrictions are there? Why do they make those restrictions in cities? For the good of the people. Yeah, for the good of the people, for the good of everybody. But part of it too, you know, let's, listen, we're all, we're all humans, right? Right? Part of it is, is that sometimes people cannot be trusted to do the right thing and to live in community, even if they're living in a town. They just want to do their own thing, right? And so part of the reason that, that laws have to be written is because people are kind of stepping outside that understanding of community. You have to be willing, if you're going to live in a community. Listen, when you get into a marriage, that's a, that's a community, isn't it? I guarantee you, when you get into a marriage, you're going to, you're going to give up some of your rights, aren't you? If you're going to have a marriage, you will. You know, that's, that's just the way it is. And, and what we say is it's better, it's better to give up some of my rights for the better of, of what I get from that. You see? That's what we're talking about with respect to community. Now, again, a lot of people just, just think that that a relationship with Jesus is simply about them and him outside the realm of community. That is a non-biblical thought. That's, that's not in the Bible. Show me. Show me where it is if, if you think it is. I don't, I mean, so, so living in community, that means... Uh, that means there are just certain things that we deal with because we, we live in community, you know? Uh, you know, the other, the other uh, well, it was last Wednesday night, wasn't it? When I got kind of snippy. Yeah. Last Wednesday night, Nelda come up to me and she was telling me we needed to, we're having a big shower on Sunday and, and we need to decorate the fellowship hall for the shower course my Sunday school class meets here right and and uh, uh, I I don't like moving you know and so I you know I got you know and then I calm down you know why because we live in community that's what you do you realize that sometimes okay I would rather live in a congregation that interrupts that sometimes because we have little babies being born in it than to always get my way. See that? That's community. That's community. Okay? So it's about give and take. It's about the benefit of the whole. And believe it or not, learning how to do that is a wonderful spiritual lesson. Okay? So it's not really about space. It's about humility. It's about submission. It's about thinking about others. It's about seeing other things. You see that? Those are all spiritually developing ideas that we need to be to developing. Okay? So we, we face those once in a while, don't we? Yeah, sure we do. They're challenges, and they, they help us. But, uh, and there are times when, when you may get frustrated, I might get frustrated with something that goes on within the community of a local church. Has that ever happened to you? Where you got mad at somebody in a local church? If, listen, it probably it's happened to all of us at some point. But then you have to, you have to come to the place where you say, okay, well, what, what am I going to do with that? 
okay? And the truth is, you know, my dad gave me some advice a long time ago. Uh, he said, uh, Tony, because for a time in my life, I was, uh, <clears throat> when I was younger in my career, I, I moved a bit, you know. I'd stay somewhere, you know, about two or three years, and then I'd, I'd go someplace else in, the church, in a church. And uh, if you were to ask me why I did that, I would say, well, I don't know, people, the pe people, people. My dad finally told me, he said, you know what it is, son? He said, everywhere you go, you're going to have the exact same people. He said, the only difference is now you're going to have to figure out which one's which because you don't know. <laughs> and that's, that's absolutely right. I mean, Camille and I have joked at, at different times about, you know, w when we've met some of you all, there's times when we want to call you some, by some other name. And, and I would say 95% of the time <laughs> that the person that we're thinking about is somebody, you know, really, really awesome, you know because you remind us of somebody, you know? And, uh, but that's, that's just the way it is in community. You're gonna find that. Okay, so there, there, there are those three. So what does that mean? Well, our author is suggesting that there's great, there's great benefit spiritually by being engaged in each of those three. What that means is not only being engaged well within a local congregation, Okay, take it two other steps. You, you and I should be thinking about the body of Christ beyond Itawamba Christian Church. And you and I should be thinking about subsets of Etiwamba Christian Church that we can be a part of that are going to, you know, help us to develop as well. And we can help develop. Now, that could be a Sunday school class. That could be a, a class like this. It could be, uh, you know, a various ministries where you're working with other people. The whole point is where you're working with other Christ followers and you're developing these, these skills and, and patterns, practices of, of give and take and understanding and, and being servant-minded, humble and servant-minded like we've been talking about. These are different places where that can take place. Okay. So my encouragement to you would be, if you're not already involved in some kind of a, of a subset, like a Sunday school class, or you know, class like this, obviously you're here, but, but something like that, uh, I would encourage you to get involved in one. Because that's, that's going to be a different experience. Being in a group of Christ followers of 10 to 15 people is going to be different than the experience of being in one of 200. Just, it just is. Okay, then beyond that, let's go the other way where we're talking about the larger body of Christ. You know, the, we should be talking, visiting, communicating with people beyond Etiwamba Christian Church. Now, that could be at a brotherhood level. And when I say brotherhood, I'm talking about, you know, uh, like some of the associations that we have, like camp ministries and, and Bible colleges and things like that where we're basically dealing with churches, church people who are basically from the same variety of church we are, right? But it doesn't need to be limited to that. Uh, finding ways, it's, it's interesting to me tonight that some of the people that you mentioned who stood out to you as being examples, positive examples of the faith, were not people from what I would call the restoration movement. Okay? So... What does that mean? Well, that means we can learn from lots of places, can't we? Sure we can. So uh, it's possible to have relationships with people outside of churches just like ours that are warm and productive and God-honoring and faithful. We, just, we, need to, we need to benefit from that. We need to hang out with people who are different from us to benefit from that. But again, if we're going to live in that world, there are, going to be, there are going to be situations where we have to be willing to listen as well as wanting to be heard. There's a, there's a give and take. Okay? So that's, you know, talking about community. 
God wants us to, to, uh, to grow in community. And then number six, or section six, celebrating the practices, practices, write that down, that express community and worship. Celebrating the practices that express community and worship. When you hear the word worship, what does that mean to you? What's the most common usage for that word for you? Okay. An act of, so an, an individual, like an individual act of praise. Okay. Just the church worship service. Okay. You know, the singing, the prayer, taking the communion, you know, the interaction with the other members too. So, so we're, you see the, the issue we've, we've mentioned basically worship in two different dimensions, right? Now, there is worship in the sense that we're talking about kind of in a general sense, which is what Hope's talking about. The, the general uh, worship is about, it's about declaring the worth. That's where that word comes from. Worship is about worth. When we worship God, we are declaring his worth. Okay. And, and so we do that generally speaking in variety of ways, but we also do it specifically when we gather for times of worship, okay? So it's, it's important that when we talk about this that we, that we understand, you know, first of all, that the words have, have more meaning. One of the things that he's talking about here is the idea of celebrating the practices that express community and worship. And he lists uh, five of these things that, uh, as Jane, Miss Jane pointed out, uh, many of these, or if not all of these, are uh, a regular part of what most churches uh, include in their worship service, this, this gathering, what the body does when it gathers together in a public sort of setting. Okay, so let's, let's talk about those. Uh, uh, w with respect, now you all you all know what the Lord's Supper is, right? I'm not going to spend time talking to you about what it is. My question to you is: Do you see the Lord's Supper as an act of worship that also helps build community? How does it do that? For taking together. For taking together. Okay, that's, that's a part of that, isn't it? Okay, you know what would really make it even more that way? Now, this, we, we're not going to do this, so nobody freak out on me, okay? This is just Tony being Tony, all right? If we went back to one cup, right? Now, that would be, that would be uh, an act of togetherness, wouldn't it? I guarantee you, the line at the front of the communion cup would be, would there be a, people would be getting up to come. I'm just telling you, you know, let me get there first, you know, okay. But, well, there it is too. Yes. Yeah, we could, yeah, that, there it is. Um, but, see, once again, listen, listen, once again, most of us have been taught about the Lord's Supper as an act of worship and specifically as an act of worship that, that, that directs our attention to the sacrifice of Jesus, his death. Okay, that's all true. But uh, it is also something that uh, all believers in Christ do. Now, Yes, I, I've been on the planet for a while, so I know that not all believers in Christ do it as often as we do it, right? I get that. But every tradition, you know, whether you're talking Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Baptist, Christian, Catholic, you know, pick it out. You know, Church of Christ, whatever you want to talk about, they all celebrate the Lord's Supper. Okay, and again, depending on the various community that you might be talking about, uh, 
it, it's going to vary a little bit. But what what our author's encouraging us to see is uh, the essence of how the Lord's Supper is not only as a as an act of worship that I engage in, or that I even engage in together with others who are in the room, but how it how it's it's almost like glue that sticks us together. We we take it together, and we all take it, which means that there's there's commonality, and and that's something that needs to be celebrated. That's it's not just about the remembrance of, of Jesus' death, that is pivotal, that is key, but that's not, it's not exclusive. There are other dimensions to this that, that we need to celebrate. Let's go on and talk about baptism. Baptism uh, uh, is, is, another, is another thing like that. Every church, now again, well, it's funny, one of the things that, that that divides us within the body of Christ are, are these two things, right? Communion and uh, baptism. Because what, what, do, what do all these congregations have in common? They both practice forms of baptism. They all do. They all practice forms of the Lord's Supper. They all do. But they just do it differently, in different ways, different frequencies, uh, to some extent, for different reasons, and so, um, but the point that our author is making by referencing Paul, particularly from Colossians chapter three, is that Paul, Paul is using baptism in the same way that I was just talking about the Lord's Supper. That it is one of those kind of worship expressions that all followers of Jesus have experienced. Every follower of Jesus has experienced that. That is Paul's assumption. Okay? Again, I know not everybody sees it that way. But that's the way Paul saw it. That that was something that, that people, people did. And so, um, once again, baptism is, a, is something that we celebrate. Now, I am one of the things that I'm, I'm looking forward to and I don't know, I'm almost to the place where I'm going to draft somebody who's already been baptized just to do it, just because, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't got to baptize anybody yet. I, and there haven't been anybody baptized here yet since I've been here. Okay? So if anybody wants to get wet soon, let me know. You know, we'll hook you up. I'm, but seriously, ba baptisms, I, I've not really seen baptisms here. But baptisms are... Uh, they should be not only about an individual's desire to come to Christ, but again, the community dimension of this, we are welcoming, we are welcoming somebody into the community, uh, not only you know, here, but the community at all these different levels. But this is, you know, this is, this is a huge thing. This isn't just about that particular person. It's about every one of us. You know, this is something, this is something that always kind of drove me crazy. That, uh, uh, I, you know, I've been in churches where, uh, again, I don't know how y'all do it, so I'm probably stepping in it here, but I, you know, whatever. But usually what happens in churches that I've been in is when someone has gotten baptized in the service. Okay, so they'll come forward at the end, right? And then, you know, hopefully we know so that the, the thing's ready, the water's ready, and we and then we go through the process of them changing and da 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 da. You know, you've got that takes time, doesn't it? Yep, it does. Okay, and so what has happened a lot of times that to me is is kind of frustrating is that uh, you'll have this you'll have this person who has has come forward and is making this this decision that has to do with not only their eternity, but, the, but our community together, right? And so they come and, and they get baptized. And, you know, what I've seen in the past in churches is we will, you know, yay, they got baptized, that's cool. Let's stand up and let's sing the closing chorus, and then everybody leaves. 
Okay. Again, I don't know what we do here, but let me encourage you that when we do finally get to baptize somebody in the worship service, just, you know, chill. Okay? Let's celebrate. When they, when they get out, when they've, you know, gotten dried off and they come out, what a wonderful thing it would be if there were more than a couple of people there to say congratulations. What if the, what if the entire congregation was there to say, woohoo! You know? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wake me up. Yes, sir. <laughs> In more, yeah, there it is. Okay. But, but that's because now, I mean, they're connected to us, right? Yeah. So, anyway, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about Can that I again. Ask one yes, sir. Last Sunday, when we were having our Lord's Supper, yes, sir. and they were passing around, I didn't get the bread. Oh, yeah? My, <laughs> there was no bread in the bottom? There, there were no. It no. was a pass. Oh, okay. Was, it, was there two cups? Was there just one cup? There were, see, the bread is below. The bread is in the cup below. Oh, we didn't know that. Yes. Okay. The thing we got was the, the wine yes. and the box to put the thing. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah check on the box. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, I'll show you. I'll show you how it was, but you understand. Okay. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, prayer. Prayer is a practice that celebrates, helps us to express community and worship uh, and, you know, a lot of times, uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you pray the, the model prayer, people call it the Lord's prayer, whatever. I don't know if that's a part of your kind of prayer ritual or whatever it is. Uh, some people look at that and they say, you know, well, it, we just say it over and over again and it kind of loses its meaning. I, I suppose that's true. But I don't know, for me, uh, uh, praying through the Lord's Prayer, not just praying it, but just kind of praying it, like breaking it down section by section, and then, you know, just pausing and praying through it is a really neat way to do that. Plus, do you know the Lord's Prayer? I do hear it does. Do you? Is that right? And the reason I do is because I try to pray it. Yeah. And a lot of times I can't find the words mm. that I want to use. Yeah. So I don't have the thoughts in my head. So I look at like I say the Lord's Prayer. He knows my thoughts. So yeah. I, I kind of cover all the bases there. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay. Can, can we just can we say it together? Do you know it? Let's say our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Slow down, slow down. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, trespassers, as we forgive our debtors, those who've trespassed against us. And, and, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wasn't that cool? See, so, you all know it, but say, somehow saying it together, just impromptu like that, is... So, anyway, I would encourage you to, to, to pray it. Stop. Think. You know, maybe focus on one aspect of it, but also prayer ministry, praying for one another, praying for one another. I like the fact that we, we have a pretty active prayer ministry that's going on within this congregation. And, uh, you know, that builds community. See, see what I'm talking about? It's an aspect of worship, but it also helps to, to build community. And then uh, scripture reading. Uh, I included in there uh, Acts 17, 10 to 12. Oh, wait, we didn't talk about giving. We've got to back up and talk about giving. God loves a cheerful giver, uh, according to the Apostle Paul. Uh, 
Each of you should give what they have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is, a, is another act of worship that also uh, it manifests itself in practical ways where uh, we can, by, by doing it in the context of community, we're able to do much more than we can do beyond ourselves. I mean, it's, it's a multiplication factor. And as each one of us uh, looks at the, the resources that God has blessed us with, and then as we decide how it is that we're going to manage those resources by giving, investing it back specifically into things like Etiwamba Christian Church or you know, the, the Christian camp or colleges or whatever that is, then uh, by, by necessity then we are connected to that. We're, we're invested in it, okay? Any of you got any stock? If you got any stock, you watch the market every once in a while, don't you? You know why? Because you're in it. You're connected to it. Okay, so, and then scripture, uh, Acts 17 says, uh, 10 to 12, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. The Bereans, you've heard about the Bereans? They were, they were well known by their love of scripture and how they tested the scriptures. They were, they were well versed in the scriptures. And then when Paul came and, and taught them, you know, this, you, know what, you know what Bible he used? You know what Bible Paul used? He used the Old Testament. There was no New Testament. So he, you know, he had to connect Jesus, the Messiah, to what had been written about him in the Old Testament about Messiah. That was, that was what they were testing. Because Paul would say this about Jesus as Messiah, and they would test the scriptures to, to see, wow, does that, whoa, that does make sense. And, and that was something that they were extremely diligent about. Uh, it helps to keep us together and, and also not in going off in a lot of different directions. Uh, that's why, you know, there is benefit to us, you know, studying the scripture on our own, of course, absolutely. But there's also great benefit in studying the scripture together as, as a people, as a congregation, and so on. So anyway, all of that kind of, again, takes, takes the idea of, of scripture and story and example and community and practices. And as we use these as kind of the basis of, of how we're developing habits and practices to to move forward in those areas, we're going to, we're going to see great, I think, in great improvement and great uh, encouragement in our walk together. So, uh, again, next week, we're going to launch in to this, uh, this idea about the quiet time. One thing that you're definitely going to need next week when you come is a Bible. You, you either need to have it you know, on your phone or some device or you're really going to need to bring your Bible because we're going to be looking uh, at some things and hopefully you'll uh, uh, maybe write some things down and mark some things uh, as we get started. Questions? Questions about what we've talked about tonight? Anyway, it's good to see you all. I'm glad we get to we get to do this. So, why don't we stand up and pray, and we'll go forward. <clears throat> Father, we're grateful tonight that we can gather in your name. We're grateful that we can uh, study together uh, the ways that you have called us to uh, to to be better connected and to walk well with you. Father, I pray tonight that as we uh, continue to process all of this, of this uh, 
of the way that you've called us to be your disciples and, and how that works and, and so forth. And as now we, we pivot into some very, very practical uh, dimensions of that, I just pray that you would help us to be eager uh, to learn maybe some new habits and uh, but also realize that when we learn new habits, it's not always easy. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take some, uh, some determination. And yes, there's probably going to be some frustration along the way. Help us to, to ready ourselves for that and to, and to be so that we can be the people that we've talked about tonight. Great examples and wonderful, uh, wonderful members of your community. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. Uh, Father, we do want to lift up Amelia tonight and just pray for her. I know she's got some, uh, some eye things that she's dealing with tomorrow. And also, we want to continue to pray for Beatty as he, as he uh, continues to recover from surgery. And, and just other needs, Father, that, uh, that we're aware of. Help us to be sensitive to those and, uh, and reach out as we can. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night.